All right. <clears throat> So screen time is something that comes up frequently when I am meeting with parents. Um, I guess it comes up in a different context when I'm meeting with kids. They want, they want more of it and they're a little bit nervous that their time might be too limited. Uh, parents are concerned that their children have too much of it. And so I just wanted to talk a little bit about why it matters that we limit screen time and then actually look at uh, ways that we can do that and uh, manners, that, manners that are respectful to our children um, and their interests uh, while also using it to to help build some responsibility and some skills in their life. So first, um, just why this matters. Uh, there's two primary reasons. The first is uh, controlling what they are exposed to. And this is uh, just extremely important because we oftentimes don't know what they're going to look at or what they're going to be exposed to because they don't even know what they're going to be exposed to. It's not a situation where they necessarily have to go looking for um, certain content. Sometimes it just kind of happens. Um, this happens due to just the way that algorithms work on YouTube and other um, apps or games or uh, video streaming content where they will automatically recommend or even autoplay content that's even semi related to what the child is looking at. So what we find is that um, even uh, even within a short span of autoplays, like kids can go from child friendly content to content that includes um, violence or risk taking behavior where they see other kids um, maybe doing pranks or unsafe stunts, um, it could be sexual content, it could be negative stereotypes, whether those be uh, racial stereotypes, whether they be gender stereotypes, whether they be religious stereotypes, whatever it might be. Uh, then we might see some uh, drug use. Uh, they will be exposed to cyberbullying um, and maybe worse, predators. <clears throat> um, also kind of seemingly innocent, but uh, not much when you when you really dig in into it is advertising that's targeted towards your child. Um, we don't want them to be um, solicited in that way too often. <clears throat> um, and then this misleading and inaccurate information. Uh, these, uh, these are a lot of, there's a lot of information out there and when children are just kind of left to their own devices, they just kind of happen upon this content. Uh, the other issue might, might be more, say, medical in, uh, in nature. And that uh, we find that when kids have excessive screen time, they have sleep problems um, that impacts their performance in school. Um, they spend less time socializing with friends or even with family. Uh, they don't get enough physical activity. So we see quite a bit of obesity um, or even malnourishment. <laughs> if they're just not taking breaks to eat um, and stay nourished. Um, they have mood problems. Kids become extremely dysregulated uh, when their brains are occupied at all times with entertainment. And any time away from that uh, just seems like there's something missing and that can lead to sadness or anger. Um, also poor self-image, uh, just kids comparing themselves to very curated and manage, managed um, internet pages or videos that display other people's lives. Um, and then, you know, they have less time learning how to relax and have fun in other ways. So um, every hour on screen time is an hour they're not using to develop a talent or a skill. So just, uh, just to kind of highlight how important this issue really is, when you uh, compare teens who spend one hour on electronic devices to teens that spend five or more hours a day on electronic devices, the teens that have higher use, um, or at least five or more hours of screen time, are 71% more likely to exhibit uh, suicidal risk factors. Um, a survey of teachers um, noted that 67% of students um, being distracted by mobile devices in school. I think that's probably a conservative estimate. And then uh, children 8 to 12, <clears throat> um, they spend about four to six hours a day watching or using screens, and teens spend about nine hours a day. Now, when you consider the school day and how much time that occupies, that's a rather startling statistic. And, <clears throat> but really, I mean, this is really kind of backed by hard data. They're not just 
doing surveys, they're actually looking at screen use time. And this is how it's popping up. So a lot of times if you ask somebody or even kind of reflect on the issue yourself, you will underestimate um, how much screen time you actually use in a day. Um, and when I say screen time, I'm referring to phone time, uh, computer time, TV time, anything that involves a screen. But really looking at this from just the child side only paints um, part of the picture because adult screen use is really setting the stage for uh, children's screen use. Um, adults will often complain about how often their child is on the phone or on their iPad, whatever it might be, and they're not really reflecting on their own uh, screen time. So that's actually kind of the first thing that you should reflect on when you're thinking about how to manage screen time. Uh, among your children is is really ask yourself those those really uh, piercing questions about how much time you're actually using. Um, so average time spent on the phone is almost three hours by adults. Um, average smartphone owner clicks, taps, or swipes um, over 2,600 times a day. Again, this is based on data that was tracked, not from self-report. Um, <clears throat> Back in 2019, 96% uh, of Americans had a had cell phones of some sort and replied to text within a few minutes. I put those two together just because we are constantly in touch with um, just outside influences. You know, we're never quite as immersed in the present moment as we used to be. <clears throat> On average, we unlock our phones about 150 times a day. Um, <clears throat> we will check our most of us by far most of us check our phones when we're having conversations with friends and family. <clears throat> and then <laughs> this is the one I think they underestimated 84% of working adults use their personal phones during working hours. That one's probably a little bit higher than <laughs> it actually was, but um, I think it just means that 16% of them are better at hiding it than others. But <clears throat> so anyway, I, I give all these statistics because I want to highlight that this is not just a children's problem, that adults are every bit, if not more so, addicted to their phones than kids are. All right. So after all of this, really the question is, well, how much screen time should my child have? Um, about until 18 months, um, screen time should be limited to just video chatting. Um, if a parent's out of town or if there's a grandparent that they want us to you know, smile at, yeah, that can be a positive use of screens. Uh, between that and two years old, uh, really should be limited to educational program programming. We don't want them to to start engaging in those games that, um, that kind of draw their attention too much and um, don't relinquish their attention. I think that's the big problem with the games is that they're specifically designed to bring people back to them. They are engineered. Uh, that's kind of the dark side of psychology that's at use here is they, they hire psychologists to uh, build structures that will bring people back. That it actually mimics um, casino games, um, which are of course addictive. Um, and so in its own way, screens can be addictive depending on how you're using them. Uh, for children aged two to five years old, um, <clears throat> you want to really limit non-educational use of screen time um, to about one hour uh, on a week, on a weekday, and then about three hours on a weekend day. Now, I think some people hear that number, they're like, well, that actually seems high, you know, three hours on a week, weekend, or, but, you know, I think in many ways we have to embrace this idea that we, screens are here, and if we just completely um, keep kids from using them, then they're never going to get the opportunities to learn to use them responsibly. And that's one of the things that we really need to focus on as parents is how can we get our child to use screens responsibly? And then for kids six and older, um, it's going to vary quite a bit uh, based on maturity, based on personality types, uh, based on their personal relationship to them. Um, <clears throat> and I think a part of this too is you have to make sure that they are balanced in the other activities that they are pursuing. If you have a child that, um, you know, has a lot of other extracurricular activities, you can allow them to, to maybe get on screens a little bit longer. If you have a child that 
only has screen time as their activity, then then you might want to limit it a little bit to give them opportunities to pursue um, to, to, to pursue other activities. And then also there are some kids that uh, maybe after two hours, they really just can't put it down. They've become um, almost addicted to it. They've uh, they've gotten into almost a trance with it. And when you ask them to put it away, there's a giant tantrum. That's probably a situation that needs to be managed. Um, so there's a lot of different considerations after the age of six uh, that you need to consider. Um, obviously, err on the side of too little rather than too much. So some guidance on this. Um, screens should be off during family meals and outings. Um, that's a good guideline. And it's not like the family's going to implode if that does not happen. But this is an excellent, very concrete rule of thumb that you can implement and really stick to and build the habit with. And just naturally putting the phones away during that time really shaves down the screen time. Um, really learn about and use parental controls on, on all screens, on your internet at home. Uh, this will really help with content finding your child. Um, if your child really wants to pursue something, they're going to get through these blocks and everything, but it's, it's going to be need to be a much more purposeful effort. Um, and as I mentioned that a lot of this content ends up just kind of falling on your child's lap, but parental controls filters help with that. Uh, we want to avoid using screens um, as babysitters, essentially, or to pacify tantrums. Uh, we don't want to use screens um to get our kids to shut up um and as tempting as that is um you know we have to use them more purposefully <clears throat> uh screens should be off 30 to 60 minutes before bed i would re really recommend 60. Um, sometimes we just don't get home uh, early enough to to allow, allow that much buffer time but they really need to start shutting their brains down much sooner um, we don't want them to learn a dependence on having a screen to fall asleep with. Because <clears throat> that might not be something that's available to them at all times. Um, and then do not don't be afraid to take the screen away. Um, children are very, very good at making you feel like you are hurting them physically by taking the screens away. Um, they will have tantrums that really make you wonder if you know they're about to explode or that they're about to fall into a deep state of depression um and i don't even really like i only say that half joking i mean they really do make you feel as a parent that you are hurting them whether emotionally or physically um, and we really just have to know better it's a screen and you're taking it away that's not actually hurting them um, especially you know if you find other ways for them to connect with friends if you find other ways for them to be entertained, um, there's lots of ways that they are just fine without their screens. And you can simply explain to them, hey, you're not showing me that you can manage this right now, so we're going to take a break and you can try again next week. Um, so it's not a forever thing, but you do need to let them know that the expectation is for it to be managed. <clears throat> so. I mentioned that really what it's not all about restriction. It's about kind of teaching them how to live in a world with screens. Um, so as such, if we're going to be the teacher, we have to know the content. So you really want to familiarize yourself with what programs are out there and how kids interact with it and what ages they are developed for. Um, you want to talk to your kids about what they are seeing. I think a lot of times um, we don't treat TV time or screen time like we would with other activities. So one of the reasons why reading is so great is not only because the child is reading and developing their language, uh, but it's also time that the adult is spending with the child and they're talking through books and stories and saying what they liked and disliked and. Um, they're having these conversations. I would encourage you in this modern world to take that mentality with screens every once in a while. 
to play the game with them, you know, and to even if it's just watching them and saying, oh, yeah, that's cool. Or if you're watching a TV show, you can point out, um, you know, themes that you've noticed or um, notice what a, you know, how a, a highlight a plot point that you're enjoying or that a character is being annoying, you know, just to be there, be present with your child. So far, the um, screens have done really amazing things with keeping us connected in many ways, but they have also isolated us in ways that we never fathomed. You can be in a house full of people and never talk with one another for for a whole evening uh, because you're all engaged in your own thing. Um, <clears throat> be aware of advertising and how it influences your, your child. Um, encourage um, activities outside of screen time. Um, if you can't, if you can't give a, a good kind of alternative to screens, kids are going to have a really hard time putting them down ever. And so we want to, we want to give them a fighting chance in that way. This one's the toughie, uh, set a good example with your own safe and healthy screen habits. Um, a lot of times parents are giving directives and they don't even look up from their phone. Um, and so children are definitely going to. Do what you do rather than do what you say. And that's just one of those tough things about being a parent, but really screen management starts with you. If you're not managing your screens, then one, you probably don't have the confidence to manage the screens in your kids because you know that it's part of your your problem. And then um, you're also not even going to be able to give them really good tips on how to do it or or say, hey, let's go outside and play because they're going to want to go out with you. Um, so a lot of times families are suffering from this together. Um, <clears throat> act, I say actively decide when your child is ready for a personal device. This should be a discussion. Um, and I and I highly encourage you to not use other kids as a ruler for this. This needs to be a decision that you make for your child and because your child is going to be ready for a phone much different than another child is at a much different age. Um, they're going to be ready for um, different levels of screen use and it really needs to be a very conscious decision. Um, again, screen time should not just happen. It should be a very purposeful endeavor. So. Um, and when and when you are using screens, just encourage creative endeavors um, and connecting with family. Emphasize those activities. So this is not all bad. I realize I kind of painted a bleak picture here, but um, screens are actually very effective if we choose to use them as such. Um, for one, they are the most motivating thing for most children. Um, I would say 99% of children, it's usually going to be screen time that motivates them the, the most. And so <clears throat> what we want to do is I want to teach a strategy that can easily be implemented and makes everybody happy. So the basic idea of this is that your children are already doing good things and they are already getting good things. And so we just want to formalize that a little bit. And the good thing that they are getting is screen time. So now we want to start making them earn their screen time. So the first step to this is take inventory of what they're already doing well. Like, what are they doing well? Um, what are those things that they do that you never have to remind them about or very rarely have to remind them about? And you give them a point for doing that. And then you inventory what they're already getting, i.e. how much screen time they're getting already. And you assign point values to those. Um, so four points equals one hour screen time or something like that. So the idea here is that you start off super easy. Um, this actually might just, you might give a, a point for the child waking up. Congratulations, you woke up, you get a point. Um, you ate breakfast, you get a point. So we can look at this example. Um, so in this, I, I actually do use wake up. Um, wake up and brush your teeth. That's two points before school even starts. 
And then immediately after school, and we want it immediately after school because we don't want it drifting too far into the evening. If you put shoes away and put your backpack on the hook, you get another two points. And at the bottom, you'll see here that in this example, two points equals 30 minutes of screen time. This is something that's decided ahead of time. If you decide I want my child to have two hours of screen time, then those two points would be worth one hour or 60 minutes of screens. Um, and so that they can earn four points to get their full two hours. <clears throat> and you'll notice that this actually isn't hard because guess what? It's things that they're already doing. So <clears throat> as the weeks progress, even after the first week, you substitute the super easy stuff for more challenging things. So sorry, you no longer get a point for just waking up. You now have to, um, I don't know, take your medication and brush your teeth, or you have to pack your lunch. And then so, so you make it progressively more difficult um, because now they know the system. They, they're more comfortable with the system that, oh, when I get my points, um, I get my screen time. And, and that becomes a really secure position for the child to be in. So they really enjoy it. Um, <clears throat> so we start to substitute items out. So they're building skills. They're learning more responsibilities and um, everybody's happier that way. Um, another big thing with this is once the child earns the privilege, it cannot be taken, taken away. Um, one way that we as adults kind of shoot ourselves in the foot is that we will promise a child something um, and then they will do something else that invalidates that. So as an example, They've earned, let's say they earn their points, okay? And they say, okay, I've earned my four points. Can I get my iPad? You say yes. And while you're handing it to them, um, they hit their sister, okay? Now, instinctively, a lot of adults will just say, uh-uh, if you're gonna hit your sister, you're not getting this privilege. But we actually have to avoid that. You deal with that issue, but deal with it separately than the screen time. They've already earned the screen time, and we're, we're going to talk about why that's important in just a second. Um, but in that way, and kids really dig this idea that it can't be taken away and it really motivates them. <clears throat> um, so, and that's why it's important to decide beforehand what you're okay with, because it, <laughs> it can't be taken away. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and then just as like a, a final note on this, it's just, you get about two to three months out of this. After that, uh, that starts to lose um, its novelty. But what you will find is even after it loses its novelty, that kids will have already developed the habit and you don't need to a formal program anymore. <clears throat> so um, why this works, and this is talking about, I'll, I'll explain why it's important um, to not take away the, the privilege. Um, so, but first off, Many times kids are overwhelmed by the idea of doing chores um, because they don't know how long it's gonna take. Um, they don't know if that chore is gonna lead to another chore. Um, <clears throat> they don't know if they get to go back to doing what they want to do. Um, and so in the child mind, they just kind of really, they ruminate on that. And they say, hey, um, I don't want to, you know, start doing chores because I don't know when it's gonna end. It might never end. We know that's not true, but they don't know that's true. It doesn't feel true to them. A lot of times conflict um, arises because, let's say you ask them to put uh, screens down, they don't know when they're gonna be able to put it back, pick it back up. If you say, hey, um, pause your game, go set the table, in your mind, in a healthy, mature adult mind, you're thinking, this is going to take five minutes tops. A five minute break is appropriate um, for them to take, which is true. It is. But in the child mind that is still developing, they think, oh, I'm, I have to put this away for the rest of the day. And who knows when I'm getting it back? It might not be today. It might not be tomorrow. It might not be until next week. Um, because once again, that's how it feels in the child mind. They just don't know when they're gonna get it back. And so they become dysregulated because they just don't know. It's unpredictable um, because our child's screen time is of course not a top priority for us as an adult, as a parent. Um, 
but just because it's not a high priority doesn't mean that it shouldn't be predictable or it can't be predictable. Um, and then this works too, because the kids are in control. A lot of kids um, never get to be in control. Um, and so in this way, in a very controlled manner, they have some control of their day and their day becomes predictable and it's something that they look forward to. Um, so if they ask for screen time and they haven't earned the points, you can just refer back to the chart and you can say, hey, you don't have the points and the child is more than happy or more than welcome to get mad at the chart, um, but it's not mad at you. This is something that they've already agreed to. Um, so really end of the day, um, we're developing a sense of responsibility um, and independence in children. Um, and then adults develop kind of a, of a controlled and respectful way to approach their children's passions um, as it relates to screen time at least. So <clears throat> um, really what we want to, to focus on with screen time is we want to always earn it and we want to use it as a method to shape responsibilities and hard work and skill building in our children. Um, we want to create an environment where they know when they can get what they want and they know how to do it. A lot of times kids adopt the strategy of I'll just throw a giant tantrum and eventually they will relent or I will be I will throw all of my teenagehood at them all at once and they're not going to be able to stand it and they're eventually going to give in. Um, we need to structure the time so that we are happy with how they're developing and they are happy with um, how they are able to take a break. Um, so ultimately, uh, as most things in life, it comes down to balance. Just try to find a balance and uh, use what motivates our children to develop skills and a sense of responsibility. Thank you.